Today we have an interesting combo for you with one piece of news from each side of the CPU fence, that being of course one from Intel and one from AMD. My name is Amata and this Red Gaming Tech video we're going to kick things off with a leak regarding the benchmarks for the Intel Core i9-7980XE. I say benchmarks, it's more benchmark as this was posted on a Korean bulletin board and basically shows us the Fire Strikes physics score of the processor but also has a rather handy comparison with the i9-7920. Before we get into the actual results, however, let's talk the specs of the machine. Obviously, we don't know everything about it, but we do know that it was running an Asus Rampage VI Apex X299 motherboard and was using a water cooling setup as well as the V-Core being set to auto and peaking around 1.25 volts. Now, as you can see on the results, the chip has surprisingly good thermals, leading to speculation from the user that they might have used solder as the tim instead of the usual paste which is present in the rest of the Core X lineup of chips. We also see an all-core clock speed of 4.8 gig GHz with temps staying below 90 degrees. Now, the user thankfully pasted a bunch of screenshots, which you should be seeing on screen now, and paints a rather nice picture. All of the information we can gather so far is that clocks like 4.4 GHz plus at vCore of 1.18 should be fairly achievable for most people. And of course, we have already seen that the Fire Strike benchmark was 37,485 with all 18, kind of, all 18 cores running. There we go, I can do words at 4.8 GHz. So all of this comes down to, well, two very important things. Pretty good performance and really nice overclockability. And of course, those are the two things that most PC gamers are going to want to know. Can I overclock it without spending an absolute fortune on like cooling and so on? Is it going to be too much of a hassle to overclock? And of course, how does it actually perform? Now, while it did score rather impressively on Fire Strike, that is of course one small sip from the well, as it were. You need much more to complete a picture of how this chip is actually going to perform, not only in Fire Strike, but of course in actual gaming performance. Real-world gaming performance can obviously vary greatly from things like Fire Strike and other such benchmarks, but it does still give us a interesting snapshot, and it's our first real benchmark of this particular chip, and so far things are looking pretty damn rosy. Now let's move swiftly on to AMD, shall we? As we have some rather good news, as they have reached a rather nice market share milestone, as they have overtaken Intel in both units sold and revenue as in Germany as their largest online retailer. Basically, this information was taken from mindfactory.de and basically shows that Ryzen and Threadripper have over several months overtaken Intel in the month of August. Now Threadripper have, has been doing rather well for itself and as you can see, a helpful Redditor has put this information on display which was collected by mindfactory.de and then obviously made public and they have put it forward in a rather tasty chart so you can get a look-see for yourself exactly how well AMD have been doing versus their competitor. But basically, it shows that when Ryzen first came out back in March, AMD only had a 26 point, sorry, 27.6% of CPU unit share, but it grew every month until nearly 49% in July, and as I said, finally overtook Intel this month, or I guess this, not last month technically, it's now officially September, where on earth has the year gone? But regardless, they reached 56% of the unit share in August, and they've also seen doubling of units sold in just six months at this particular retailer. We can also see that the best seller is the Ryzen 5 1600, hardly surprising given its rather nice value, but we've also seen the more expensive chips still following fairly closely behind with the 1700, 1600X, and of course 1700X. What's more interesting, however, is what's on the second graph which basically shows that AMD are still managing to hold on to a lion's share of the revenue and not just bounding around impressive figures of volume of units shifted, which is obviously a tactic used fairly often, not just by AMD, but pretty much every company ever, 
but it just shows that no, as well as selling a lot of units, they're also making a lot of money. But you might say, well, isn't that kind of going without saying? Well, not really, because while well, IMD in particular have a history of sacrificing profitability in the case of trying to get that share growth and get that victory away from Intel of having the larger share, but while they have done that, they have also managed to pretty much stay on top when it comes to their revenue as well. Now, obviously, this is a small, tiny needle picked out, or a tiny thread picked out of a large tapestry of even Germany and, of course, Europe as a whole. But it does see, it does kind of follow, rather, the wider reaction that we've seen by consumers to a genuinely competitive product in Threadripper and of course Ryzen as well. You know, Ryzen has been doing very, very well for itself. As I already said, you know, Threadripper has also been doing pretty damn well. And this just kind of gives us a picture of how things are doing in Europe and things are looking rather healthy for AMD, of course. The full picture is the one that's going to be most interesting, but we're probably going to have to wait for their actual quarterly financials for that. And I feel like it's going to be really, really interesting. And things are looking more and more competitive, which is good because, you know, comp competition is good for us, the consumer. As of course, as I always keep saying, competition breeds innovation. Now, see, the real question is going to be, can AMD keep this pace up? And, well, unfortunately, as always, my crystal ball is nowhere to be seen. Merlin's rainbow is not here, not even the pink one. So, yep. Yeah. Sadly, I can't answer that, but it's definitely going to be interesting, to say the least. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.